Yo, what is going on guys? Pokeser here and today is a special video. Yes, you heard me a special special video uh, We're gonna be taking a look at my pretty much just an impression of just of Tyranitar and how he feels overall um, As a player as myself who mainly mains defender and supporters. I did wanted to try out um, Tyranitar because I do play a little bit of all-rounders like Charizard for example so with Tyranitar, he's a physical attacker. He's pretty much the perfect brawler for those for those type of plays where you just want to get in there and call and you know wreak havoc. He is going to be that Pokemon for you if you like to be like that. Um, the homie does pop off, and man, does he pop off. Um, pretty much uh, as far as early games towards late game, early game it's not he's not very good because Lavatar and then. You have Lavatar and you have Pupitar. They're, I mean, they're decent, but like you really have to really position yourself throughout these matches on the early games because you do not want to get picked off. Uh, I feel like they're a little too weak, on my opinion. Um, it's just more so like you really have to wait till level nine until you start really popping off. So if you start getting neutralized in the beginning of the, of the early games and stuff like that, it's going to be very tough for you to kind of come up from it. Uh, but like we'll talk about Lavatar's like ability gut, which is gut uh, pretty much you receive 10 damage of the max HP The attack is increased by 30% but the cooldown is 40 per, uh, 40 seconds. So it's like all right uh, Peeper Tar has the ability called shed skin uh, You once you receive damage, it's like 10% of the max HP uh, Conditions are notified and then you do gain a shield 10% max HP um, but it also is like a 40 40 second cooldown um, like I said it's just mainly about positioning and when it comes down to these two Pokemons um, I would say though once you evolve to Pupitar it feels very long to try to get to level 9 like it's just a, it feels very long like you have some some Pokemon that evolve at level 7 to level 8 or, or you know level 9 for example but once you evolve to Pupitar from there onwards to level nine it's just such a long like it's just a very long time a duration uh so you are waiting for until you hit that level nine is pretty much is when you start popping off um pretty much the move sets that you really want to go for is dark pulse and ancient powers um i'll leave pretty much a description on both of those once i tell you like how to move how to use them uh, pretty much you'd want to use ancient power first and then dragon pulse second uh, The other movesets that you can try to use is stone edge and sand tomb uh, That one would recommend you sand tomb first then stone edge But I will be explaining those movesets right now or uh, one of the moves that you do get with Tyranitar is called stone edge uh, You do get it at level 5. Uh, this deals damage to enemies in a 90 degree cone uh, pretty much you do more damage the closer the opponents are to you um, and then you can actually use this move up to three times uh, with the cone widening to about 135 to 100 to 100 to 135 and 180 degrees uh, as the video shown below and at level nine you do get sand tomb uh, pretty much <coughs> you leap in the designated direction deal damage to an enemy to any enemies hit and leaving them unable to act for a short time uh, when you do land the shock from the landing creates a cloud of dust at the point of impact, uh, pretty much dealing damage over time, and then decreasing the movement speed of the enemies by 25% for about one second within the area. Uh, if this move is used again, while you're in the clouds, the enemy in front of Tyranitar will be pulled closer to it. Furthermore, uh, while the user is in the cloud of dust, they take 25% reduced damage and can ignore defense and shield effects of enemies. And then at level 13, when you upgrade Sand Tomb, pretty much it just cr it increases the length of time of the cloud dust that, uh, that remains a point of impact, which is pretty good, which is pretty good. But we're not here to talk about those moves because they don't really get used a whole lot, but they're really good builds out there. Just they don't get used a whole lot because the fact that we got uh, DP and AP which dark DP means dark pulse and then AP means ancient powers um, and then dark pulse pretty much you get this at level five uh, pretty much it's a horizontal sweeping motion um, if the remaining HP of the enemy falls below a certain percentage they are unable to move for a short time if it hits on the opponent multiple times it deals additional damage if this move is used after ancient power the damage dealt will ignore the defense 
and shield for a longer duration uh, which would pretty much mean true damage is what we're looking at here and then at level 9 of course you do get the second moveset which would be ancient powers um, releases a shockwave by charging up you deal damage as well as stun while charging up it becomes resistance to hindrance and movement speed is increased to 30 percent for three seconds and it also grants a shield uh, the shield can stack up to three times and it'll last about five seconds if the shockwave hits your opponent piercing strength increases meaning true damage uh, defensive shield will be ignored and your true damage will start popping up more uh, if this hits the enemy a second wave will release dealing damage and decreases movement speed by 30 percent for two seconds um, it also grants tyranitar a shield if the second shockwave hits successfully uh, the shield can also stack up three times per enemy hit so if you hit three enemies the the shield will stack up three times but no more than three so just keep that in mind if you're trying to go for that that stacking that stacking shield um but as far as as far as the pokemon goes like if you're really into getting it down and dirty he is the perfect mon for you uh it for me i'm not very good at getting down and dirty bro but i'll tell you what homie does pop off like occasionally you can do some 1v5s and it's outrageous um people say he's broken i feel like he's not you can really counter him with like a slow bro uh with the pikachu with the mammal swine as well like i was going up against pokemons like those three i, I just i just mentioned and they neutralized me so heavily and i just i couldn't really do anything like that um i did take some heavy l's with them but i did take some really good dubs uh where he really popped off for me like as long as you know how to use the movesets right he he does he does pop off especially with that true damage being built up yeah you're gonna you're gonna make you're gonna you're gonna start popping off for sure so as far as the pokemon goes um i would put tyranitar as a it's kind of hard people are putting them as an s tier i think <clears throat> i might put him as an a plus tier um he's really i like i said bro like if you know how to play a brawler that man is popping you can pop off with the man um i i would put him at an a plus tier um getting close to like an s minus tier um just because the sole purpose is that he's easy to counter not a whole lot of people see that because you're they're always getting smacked but you can easily neutralize tyranitar i wouldn't say he's completely broken broken but the man you can actually counter him pretty well um but <clears throat> Ooh, the cough wanted to say hello um that's just kind of my feel for him like he's a really good pokemon and i do like to use him a lot he's one of my favorite pokemons for sure um but i would say that he is a very good pokemon that you that i would recommend to try to master um as far as movesets goes i feel like he's more I would say he's like intermittent to advance because you do have to combo combo your movesets really well in order for it to be very effective. Like for ancient power, you have to really you have to use ancient power first before you use dark pulse. That way you can get maxed out damage, especially when it comes down to true damage. Um, as far as builds go, I would normally I'll probably put in a weakness policy, razor claw, and muscle band. Uh, I feel like that it, it helps him out a little bit more, makes him more OP. Um, the good thing about Tyranitar though is that you can actually make him like more of a tankier build too. Like you can have him as a defender without really needing like the defend defensive items because his move sets give out those defensive uh, those defensive builds, uh, especially like with the granted shields, hit hindrance removal, and movement speed like. <clears throat> you can do a lot with this pokemon um as far as emblems go uh crit build is the way to go for this man for sure uh, you can go in for a cdr build a cooldown reduction build um but to be honest the cdr you don't you don't really need it because once you're using ancient power and dark pulse i feel like the move sets go down a lot quicker and you start to notice like the cooldowns are a lot quicker when you're using those type of combos um, you can probably throw in a defensive crit, uh, defensive emblem build on him as well. 
uh, you might give him more HP, more juice. That way he's more tankier. Like I said, there's really, there's a lot more options with this Pokemon that you can use. And um, I think this is where I'll probably be exploring him a little bit more. I'll probably give an update probably in a week or two to kind of see exactly where I'm at with them and uh, what builds I'm actually using for the Pokemon. Um, but without further ado, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell notification so you never miss a beat rig -a -rig -a. Or, or a scratch back. You feel me? I'm just joking. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Just remember to stay safe and stay hydrated. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day, evening, or noches. Later.